2022 has been an excellent year for gaming. We have experienced some great games and many exclusive games have also been released for PC. But even with all the fantastic games we have experienced, there were some bad games as well. And in today's video, we will go through the top 10 flop games of 2022. Although this list is about the flop games of this year, it is not determined by the number of units or amount of money each game made from sales. The list is based on the games that we had high expectations of but failed to live up to it and also had bad gameplay and story. Also the list is in no particular order, so without wasting any time, let's jump into it. Saints Row Saints Row is one of the worst games of this year according to many players. Originally, the franchise started back in 2006 and since then we have received 6 games from Volition Studio including this year's Saints Row. And somehow the 2022 Saints Row reboot is the worst out of all the other games from the series. It was a great opportunity for the studio to bring Saints Row back in a big way but they failed massively. Saints Row didn't offer anything fresh and the decision to use old school style mechanics for the game does not stand the test of time. Saints Row bring a new set of characters and none of the original character return to the game. And throughout the story and after completing it, you won't feel any sort of connection with the other characters. The dialogues are cringe and it sounds like the character is trying too hard to deliver them, that it sounds fake. Game story-wise, the game does not do anything new or good and the gameplay feature an arcade-like experience. The missions are repetitive and boring and whenever a mission starts, you will end up somewhere shooting waves of enemies. The only thing good about the game is probably the customization as there were tons of options on how you want your character to look. Apart from that, Saints Row does not bring anything new and at times it feels like the game struggled to execute the basics of what the original titles did. Vampire The Masquerade Swan Song The game is a role-playing video game by Big Bad Old Studio. The vampire story sets in Boston and you play as three different vampires. All of them are members of Camarilla, which is some sort of vampire governing body and mafia. The three vampires are M.M., who is politically ambitious vampire, Galeb, who is a loyal Camarilla henchman, and Lisa, who has recently awakened from three years in hibernation and has a mental illness. All three vipers were sent to different places for one mission to find out who recently mass murdered the vampires. The gameplay features telltale and life is strange like gameplay experience and the game features no actual combat or fighting. Most of the time you will talk with NPCs, find clues and solve puzzles. The graphics look outdated and hand movements of the characters look unnatural. The character details are there but at times the lighting makes those characters look completely unnatural. Although the game is a unique one and you can enjoy it if you like narrative driven non-combat style games but even the story gets boring. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is an open world Pokemon game developed by Game Freak which was released last month. Graphics wise the game is not best looking one but again it is for Nintendo Switch so we can't expect next gen graphics for a Switch game. But the game has serious performance issues. There are tons of bugs and glitches and at times it struggles to run at 30 FPS. The game averagely runs at 20 FPS and at times it drops to 15 and 10 FPS. The world struggles to load and looks all blurry and also the game doesn't feature any voiceovers. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet do have some positives but it gets outnumbered by the negatives. For some reason some improvements that have been made by the previous games are missing in this one and overall the game looks like an early access game that shouldn't have been released. The studio could have easily delayed the game for next year and fixed all the glitches and bugs and it could have been a great game. Babylon's Fall The game was developed by Platinum Games, a studio that previously delivered games like Nier Automata and Bayonetta series. Babylon's Fall is so bad that when the game was released, game managed to get a peak player count of 1166. On May 4th, the game managed to get only one concurrent player on PC. There isn't any data available for consoles. The lack of details in the character models looks awful and outdated. Babylon's Fall had many small closed beta testing phases and after much negative feedback from the player base, the studio fixed the visual blurriness issue. But the beta testing was terrible in general as it featured nothing related to the story. On top of that, Babylon's Fall gear and emote assets were borrowed from Final Fantasy. 
The game was missing narrative variety and progression, and it feels like the studio was prioritizing live service elements over the actual game experience. Babylon's Fall has one good thing and that is combat system, and even the combat system lacks depth. And like I said, the studio prioritized live service elements so much that you can't play the game without having a PS Plus subscription and even after that, you have to log into a Square Enix account to play the game. Overall, Babylon's Fall lacks depth in every game aspect. Dolman Dolman is a soul-like game with sci-fi elements developed by Massive Work Studio. It feels like the studio tried to copy the Souls-like game but they did it poorly and forgot to copy what makes a Souls-like game entertaining. The game narrative is so bland that it won't hook you up at any point and the game has poorly paced difficulty and checkpoints. Both single player and multiplayer mode isn't polished enough and the combat system looks sluggish and awkward. The level design is also bad and the bosses are easy to learn but have too much health that it takes way too long to kill and the bosses could just kill you with one hit at times. The game also had many bugs and glitches and some of them would just force you to reset your progression. Although the game has some positives and the developers clearly tried something but Dolman looks like an early access game that does not justify the full price tag. The Waylanders the Waylanders is an old-school RPG developed by Ghetto Studio. Although the Waylanders kept things fresh and come closest to an old-school RPG with a tactical pose function, however, visual glitches, deposing models and shuttering camera movement doesn't help the game experience. The game story lacks context and depth and the dialogues are cringy as well. The characters are poorly written and even the dialogue and the voice direction are also bad. The Waylanders have tons of bugs that don't help the game at all. There are minor bugs like map not working properly or missing item descriptions but there are some game breaking and frustrating bugs and glitches. When loading into new areas, the player may find themselves inside the walls which will force them to reload from the previous autosave. The idea behind the Waylanders was good and the studio tried to take a variety of inspiration from other RPG games but failed to implement any of them effectively. Crossfire X Crossfire X is an Xbox exclusive first person shooter game developed by Smilegate Entertainment. The game has two modes which are multiplayer mode and single player mode. And the single player campaign was developed by Remedy Entertainment who previously delivered us games like Alan Wake, Max Payne and recently Control. The multiplayer mode of the game is a messier version of CSGO and the combat feels clunky and weird. The tactical view of the game feels unbalanced and the lack of content for the multiplayer mode hurt the game. On the other hand, single player is decent but not the best work from Remedy. The campaign is short and feels like they have rushed it. Over on Metacritic, Crossfire X received zero positive reviews from the critics and the user rating made the game one of the worst games that got released this year. Postal 4 Postal 4 is described as the true sequel to Postal 2 by the developer Running With Scissors. Postal 4 No Regrets is one of the worst games of this year. Like the previous Postal games, you'll be given a different set of errands to complete each day from Monday through Friday. And one thing each of those missions has in common is that it's boring and not engaging in any way. Talking about the game stories, there isn't one and to be honest, it's Postal, you are not gonna play Postal for narrative. Every attempt the game makes to crack a dark joke is just bad. The jokes are unfunny and flat. The MPC AI is also dumb and fundamentally broken. The game also has tons of bugs and glitches and it crashes frequently causing you to lose your progress. Postal for No Regrets received 17 negative reviews from critics out of 18 reviews. Gotham Knights Gotham Knights is an Arkham game developed by WB Games Montreal. Although the developers said that the game is not connected to the Arkham series in any way and they also marketed the game as Life After Batman but it is hard not to compare the games. The game tries too hard to convince that it is different, Batman is dead, but in combat all the characters end up using the same sort of fighting style as Batman. The game has some performance related issues as well, as there isn't any 60fps option. The game is locked at 30fps and you can't turn off ray tracing, the game does not give you that option. The game is also not properly optimized and it struggles to run at 30 fps on next gen consoles and they also released it for old gen consoles as well. If we talk about the Batman Arkham series, every game from the series was fun to play and give satisfaction but it feels like Gotham Knights just missing that satisfaction. It feels like you are grinding XP for the next mission 
and the boss fights lacks variety in how you fight them. The studio tried to do something different with Gotham Knights and even after they killed Batman, it feels like they just split him into four different superheroes. Diablo Immortal Well, I don't think I need to say anything, it's just bad. Diablo Immortal was originally released for mobile ports and is a free-to-play MMO. And on the same day it got released for mobile ports, they launched a beta for PC as well. With Diablo Immortal, Blizzard made EA look like a decent company. At a certain level, you'll get stuck and you won't be able to progress further in the story without upgrading. Diablo Immortal is a perfect example of how microtransactions can ruin a game completely. At launch, it got reported that players will need around £90,000 or $110,000 to upgrade their character in Diablo Immortal. If we talk about the PC version of the game, it's just pain to play. The PC version of the game has a horrible interface, inaccurate movements and skills with the keyboard and mouse. There is a bug that causes to pop up the main menu whenever you press escape. At times the game runs smoothly at 30 fps while exploring frames started to drop. Blizzard made tons of money with Diablo Immortal as it got reported that in the first two weeks they generated over 20 million dollars with 8 million downloads. But to earn all the money they have risked their reputation as the backlash and negative impact they have received from the game will impact their upcoming titles. The upload Immortal is so bad that it made history as it became the worst user rated game on Metacritic with 0.3 ratings. And this is my list of flop or bad games of this year. Comment down below the name of the worst game that you played this year. And do hit the like button and do consider subscribing to the channel for more gaming related content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, goodbye.